Nothing out there has power over you. What's going on guys? My name is Dave Haas and thanks for taking the time to watch this video here at Rise Up Rich. And today, what I'm going to be talking about, how it's never about what is going on out there and it's always about what is going on in here or within ourselves. And the best way I can describe this to you is just through my own personal example. And this comes, this is a really easy way to understand this, is through the state of anger. 80% of North Americans live in a state of anger. And I can identify with this because that's where I once lived. I understand what it was all, all about. It was like I was like a mousetrap and I had all this tension and I was just waiting for someone to come along and trigger me so I could release that tension, release that anger, release that energy. But the problem with anger is that is just that, is that we're always under tension. And the payoff that we're getting about being under that tension is we get to release it and we get to experience the energy behind that release. But the issue is we can't live our lives in this calm, in this state of constant tension. It would be like driving your car down the freeway at 160 miles an hour with your foot to the floor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you continue to do that, eventually your car is gonna break down in some way, shape or form. Your relationships are gonna to begin to fall apart. Your health is gonna to begin to fall apart. Your financial stability is gonna to begin to crumble. And these are the things that happen when we live our lives in a state of anger. And why is this about what's going on out there? It's because we're allowing what's happening out there to trigger us. And anytime something triggers us, it should be a moment for us to become aware of how we're feeling and how we choose to deal with it. It isn't the events of life that are creating our issues. It's how we respond to them that creates the problems in our lives. A good example of this is that all angry people attract angry situations. I've been in the bar business for over 25 years and I've probably been in five fights uh, while I've been in the bar business. And the reason for that, those fights are usually to kick people out of the bar or defend uh, somebody else that was um, in the fight. I have people that I know that every single time they walk into a bar, they get into a fight. This is a perfect example of how the angry person attracts angry situations. They see the anger in every situation. Someone bumps them in the shoulder in the bar, whereas I would say, oh, sorry about that. The person that's holding on to the anger is going to say, hey, fuck you. I'm getting into a fight. So this is how the angry person att attracts the angry situation. For me, it wasn't all about um, fighting. I, was ne I, never held my, I never released my anger through physical violence. I really release my anger usually on my mate, uh, on my employees, on my friends. And most of the time it was against on the world, just this constant frustration with the state of the world. But once I came to realize that there was this amazing life on the other side of anger, that is when everything shifted for me. So how did I make the shift? How did I move from anger? And I heard a really cool quote the other day is that you can't read the ingredients of the box from inside the box. And it's such a great saying because that's exactly where I was. When I was in the state of anger, I couldn't tell that I was in the state of anger, but just becoming aware that that's where I was, I was in this place of anger, began to make the shift. So what did I do to move out of the state of anger? So the first thing I did was I took full responsibility. I already made a video on taking full responsibility. Of ultimately, what it came, comes down to is I stopped passing blame. I came to the realization that I and I alone was the only reason for where I was in my life in this moment. Once I did that, it, took, it allowed me to take back my power. And once I had my power back, I stopped passing the blame and some of the anger dissipated that I had around the world. The next thing was I used the and then what method. Um, this is just a great little method. A lot of us have anger and fear around uh, very basic fears, poverty, death. Those are two of the big ones. So I'll give you a quick little example about this. Um, I backed my car into a rock one day. I had to do like this three point turn. I backed into a rock and the old me would have just been angry, drove away, sped away, went down the freeway, just angry. And I would have held on to that anger for ever probably until something else piled on top of that, piled on top of that, and then I was triggered and I had the release. And then the, the, the whole process would begin over again. But now because I was in this greater state of awareness and I was aware of the emotions that I was feeling, 
I backed myself into the rock, and immediately I did go to anger. And I was saying things like, what the fuck? Like, why are you so stupid? Why did you back into the rock? Then I started passing the blame to the guy that had the rock at his end of his driveway. And then the awareness stepped in. I said, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So I thought about it for a little bit, and I used the and then what, per, uh, a then what approach, which ultimately said, okay, you backed your car into the rock, now what? Or then what? Well, now I'm going to have to get it fixed. And then what? Then it's going to cost you money. And right there in that moment, once I came to this realization that it was about the money and it was about my fear of poverty. And by using the and then what scenario, I'd already let go of my fear of poverty. Because if you go down the and then what scenario, eventually you'll come to poverty. So this is another great one. What happens if you lost your job? And then what? I'll say, well, then I would have to uh, sell my house. Okay. And then what? And then I would have to move into an apartment. Okay. And then what? And then, what happens now you run out of money? And then what? Well, then I would have to move, in, move uh, in with my parents. Okay, and then what? And then I would be miserable because uh, I hate living with my parents. Okay, and then what? And then people would think I'm a loser because I didn't have a job. Okay, and then what? So now already, as we keep going down this path, we start to realize that fear of other people's opinions is one of the, our driving factors. The other one, some people might not have parents to go to. So the scenario might be, and then I'm on the street. And then what? Then I die. Now we're identifying the fear of death. So the and then what per approach allows you just to keep going down further and further down the road to identify what the underlying fears are behind the emotions that we're feeling. And once we start to identify those, we can start to let them go. And that goes to the third technique, which is the letting go technique. So for me, the way I, the letting go technique is basically this. You feel the emotion fully. There's nothing wrong with experiencing anger. What's wrong with it is if you continue to hold on to it for an ever, ever, and ever, and ever. Now when I experience anger, I sit with that feeling or with that emotion and sit with it alone and feel it fully. I don't resist it. I don't rationalize it. A great way of rationalization is in death. Think of death of a pet. Someone's pet dies, what do we say? You gave it a good life. Well, that's rationalization. And that rationalization is there so you don't have to feel that feeling as much. But the only way through a feeling, anger included, is to feel it and feel it fully. If you sit with the emotion of anger and allow it to escape your body, allow it to escape your consciousness, the power and the energy behind it will only last about five minutes and it will be gone forever and you won't hold on to it and eventually snap. So once I came to this realization that I didn't have to hold that tension, I didn't have to set the mousetrap, this whole new world opened up for me. And the last one was just awareness. Awareness allowed me to become aware that I was in the state of anger. And now that I was in the state of anger, I could see the anger coming on like a bus. That bus of anger is coming, coming towards me and the old me would have got on that bus and would have kept on going right down the road. But the new me was able to see the anger coming and just step away. And I wouldn't even have to go through the letting go technique because I just allowed the anger to pass in that moment. So. That is a brief overview of how it's not about what's going on out there. It's not about these situations that are happening in our lives. It's about how we respond to them. So it's never about what's going on out there. And it's always about what is going on in here. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I look forward to seeing you next time.